X-ray showed no fracture or joint dislocation. What is your diagnosis? Define the underlying pathological process and explain the sequence of events in this phenomenon. Add a note on the various agents causing the changes. The topic will have to be dealt under the following subheadings. In fact, it is a large chapter in which we should be covering all this. We shall be doing them sequentially. In this class, however, I will be concentrating on the vascular changes. Inflammation is not a disease by itself, but a reaction to a disease. A definition by John Hunter. And these are the cardinal signs of inflammation. This would have been covered for you in the class. The Cala, Dollar, Rubber, Tumor. And towards the end, there is a loss of function or a functional lesion. Celsus was the author of the first four. He defined the terms scalar, rubber, tumor, and dolor, which means heat, redness, swelling, and pain. To which the last one, namely functional lisa, was also added by Rudolf Hirsch. And this gentleman was the father of modern pathology, and this is the description of the event given by Rubin. Rubin is one of the famous books in pathology. And what happens is there is an injury. It can be the smallest one, namely within the cell. And that forms the basis for disease. These were the words of Rudolf Furco, the father of pathology. And then there were other contributors also. Julius Quenim, he was a physiologist and a physician who studied the mesentery of frog and showed the various changes in inflammation, including the development of an abscess. Look at this one. When you strike your skin with a blunt instrument, you find that there is a play of colors that happens. Initially, there is a transient vasoconstriction, then a vasodilatation producing redness in the surrounding regions also. We call it erythema. And finally, there is a stasis producing an edema. We call this as flush, flare, and bean. Flush is supposed to be a red spot caused by capillary vasodilatation. Flare is the redness due to the erythema in the surrounding region as well. And wheel is the exudation producing the whiteness and the swelling. And these were authored by Sir Thomas Lewis. And it is called the triple response. This gentleman was a cardiologist. He was a neurophysician and he was also a physiologist. That is why he was able to correlate all the three things together. What are the vascular events in inflammation? Immediately you find there is a transient vasoconstriction in the capillaries. But progressively there is a vasodilation that happens. And finally there is an increased amount of vascular permeability which is delayed. There will be some amount of viscosity and stasis. In the picture here it is a sunburn as a person has a happy sunbath in the beach, he does not realize anything. But when he goes back home, after several hours, you find that there is a redness or even peeling away of the skin. And this is supposed to be a reaction to the injury caused by increased amount of vascular permeability. These are the patterns of flow. Normally in our blood vessels, we have got the cells moving in the central region. We call it an axial flow. So these are the red cells, white cells, as well as the platelets. The surrounding region is empty because the flow is axial. However, during a slowing down, you find that this axial flow is lost. 
and there is also a damming up of the cells they come more in contact with the endothelial cells and there are other changes such as margination rolling pavementing etc which we shall be seeing subsequently so this is a normal axial flow here i am seeing margination and pavement so this is one inflammation is the response of a vascularized living tissue to injury by robins please remember these words when you cut the nail there is no pain or inflammation similarly when you do something on a resected organ there is no change it has to be a vascularized living tissue and the reaction is called injury and inflammation so what happens here is this is just to show you what are all the elements that are involved this is a blood vessel i am finding the endothelium and these are the various cells within our blood we have got the lymphocytes the monocytes eosinophils neutrophils the platelets etc also in the surrounding region we have got other cells such as the mast cell the fibroblast macrophage macrophage is supposed to be the tissue counterpart of the monocyte there are also other elements such as the elastic fibers and the collagen fibers so let us see their role in inflammation before that whenever there is going to be any amount of stasis etc gradually there is a seepage and there is an accumulation of fluid and cellular material in the affected region these have been divided into the exudate and the transudate what are the actual differences between the exudate and transudate exudate you find whenever there is an increase permeability in the blood vessel in transudate there is an increase in the hydrostatic pressure within the vessel exudate everything will be in excess so increase permeability increase in protein whereas transudate it is low in protein increased turbidity or color so it will be appearing more turbid and dark whereas the transudate is clear or sometimes even colorless it coagulates because it contains fibrin does not coagulate specific gravity is high whereas the specific gravity is low in a transudate increase cellularity so see this one see what all are increased there is an increased permeability increased protein increased turbidity or darkness increase specific gravity increase cellularity by this you people can remember excess e excess for excess so everything is in excess now this is something that is happening within a vessel you find that this is the arterial end and this is the venous end in the arterial end i find that the blood pressure is high and so what happens is all our oxygenated blood is going into the surrounding tissues obviously that is the purpose of circulation and at the same time at the venous end when the blood is deoxygenated you find that the pressure is low so what happens in this particular case and there is also extra cellular fluid that is coming in by means of osmotic pressure why do you say all this look at this picture you find that there is a leg and there is no edema or anything there has been an arterial blood flow to this region but how do the veins which have got a lower blood pressure try to bring the blood back to the heart in fact the only if the pressure is high it can go back but it is low that means there is some other material the lymphatics also as well as your muscular contraction which is all helping in the return of the venous blood back to the heart so this is a normal physiology that we should have in mind so the question is how does your arterial blood go back when the venous pressure is low so see this one normally you find when there is going to be an arteriole and then the breakage is called the capillaries and then a venule there is no inflow or outflow it all goes back but what happens is in acute inflammation there is an increased amount of arterial blood flow so there is an accumulation and there is a stasis also over here as a result of which the venous blood it goes into the surrounding tissue and at the same time there is also increased permeability of the blood vessels 
so there is some accumulation which is called as edema so inflammation and edema they go hand in hand we shall see what is happening at a later date basically this one diagram i would like you people to understand there is a heart and an arterial circulation breakage into capillaries rejoining forming the vein and then there is a backflow of blood as i told you the arterial blood pressure is higher and the venous blood pressure is lower so this amount itself is not sufficient so there is an accumulation of fluid in the interstitium that is called as lymph lymph is the ultra filtrate of the plasma and this is being drained back by means of the lymphatic channels if you put both together it will be equal to the arterial pressure that is why the blood is able to come back to the heart there are two functional units namely the arterial which i had shown over here it takes the oxygenated blood to the different parts of the body and then there is a venous blood which carries the deoxygenated blood back to the heart there is a third unit called the lymphatics and artery is equal to venous plus lymphatic as far as pressure is concerned there is a beautiful starling hypothesis that we will have to remember it says that edema is due to an increase in the amount of hydrostatic pressure or a decrease in the plasma oncotic pressure or it can be because of the increase in the amount of intravascular osmotic pressure and the decrease in the hydrostatic pressure these are the things which are manning it normally in a blood vessel when there is going to be an increase in the hydrostatic pressure or a decrease in the osmotic pressure you find that there will be the fluid moving out however when there is going to be an increase intravascular osmotic pressure but decreased hydrostatic pressure there is a movement of the fluid from the interstitium back into the vascular space and that is what is seen over here here at the arterial end pressure is high at the venous end it is low and this is the space called the interstitium where there is accumulation of material this is a picture of the vascular endothelium normally you find that there can be a passage of fluid across the endothelium these are all small vesicles there is something that is engulfing it and then it is moving it to the other side this is one thing that is possible or sometimes you find that there can be a breakage or a contraction of the endothelial cell that produces a space favoring a transition third one is you find from this it can move into the lumen as such or the interstitium so this is how the fluid moves through the endothelium this particular picture is given for a different purpose you find that see this is supposed to be a sinusoidal space sinusoid is a narrow even ultra capillary you can say it is a narrow space and it is lined by cells called the endothelial cells there is some space between that so this is a narrow sinusoidal space sometimes you find that there is this is the basement membrane as such and this is the endothelium sometimes there can be fenestrated fenestration means it is having some windows in it openings are called as fenestration or in some cases you find that there won't be any fenestration or opening which is called as a continuous endothelium and the last one is this is common in the case of glomerulus so you find that there are different types of it it can be fenestrated with windows or it can be continuous so this again explains the same thing you find that in some of the glands you find such as the mucosa etc there is a transition of the material through the interstitium interstitium is the space in between or in some conditions you find that there can be vesicles which are engulfing and then they are moving it across third one is there is a discontinuous endothelium so there is a passage of material this we should be having in mind as far as the vascular chain there are two things which can happen one is a contraction of the endothelial cell second is an endothelial injury contraction of an endothelial cell or an endothelial injury let us see what this means 
so this is the pattern of endothelium and the gray colored one is the basement membrane and this is the endothelial cell with the nucleus in this case i am finding a tight junction there is hardly any space between whereas here there is an increased amount of interendothelial space by which the material can pass through cells also can pass through is it clear and in this one i am finding that there are vesicles being formed by this you find that the material can pass across the endothelium two things are probable and the third one is i find that there is a fenestration fenestration means window through this gap there can be the passage of the material so i again repeat once again it can be a tight junction or there can be intercellular cleft or there can be fenestrations last but not the least there can be damage to the endothelium by which there can be a passage of material step by step let us see it is more or less a school portion you find that there is a cell when there is a slowing down of the circulation it moves closer to the endothelium and it's closer over here and then it becomes flattened it becomes more flattened and after some time it is not able to move finally between the endothelium there is a gap maybe because of the contraction between the endothelial cells and it moves out this process is called as diapedesis during the earlier edition of robins it used to be assumed to be a passive process there is a slowing down and then there is a cell over here it gets more or less flattened and finally it moves between the endothelial cells but nowadays they say that lot of materials such as selectins integrins etc and addition molecules which are helpful let us see in the next diagram this is a superb diagram i would like you people to kindly memorize this so there is a flow of blood the rbcs are here there is a central axial flow as we mentioned earlier whenever there is a slowing down because of some injury or some thrombus etc you find that this axial flow is lost and the cell gets closer to the endothelium and in this there are several molecules here i find that there is one here another and ultimately you find there are some elements which are being produced by the cell itself called as chemokines and these help in the addition now what are all this addition molecules you people should know there can be a selectin l selectin p selectin and e selectin p selectin means for polymorph e for endothelium and then there can be a polymorph endothelial cell addition molecule vascular cell endothelial addition molecule or there can be integrins or there can be intercellular addition molecules very easy for us to remember so let us remember these molecules they help in the addition of the cells after which you find that it becomes closer and closer and in the meantime there is a contraction of the endothelial cells producing an inter endothelial gap and the cell passes through it this is called as diapedesis after which it moves towards the bacteria which is supposed to be a chemo attractant and the process is called as chemotaxis so these are the cardinal signs of inflammation let us recall once again there can be pain there can be heat there can be redness there can be swelling swelling means tumor tumor is a swelling so that is why it is that and pain redness is rubor or redness and ultimately there is a loss of function or a functionalis and this has been derived from the source inflammation by such it is not a segmented process it is a continuous process the moment there is an injury multiple changes start happening and so there is a continuity continuity gives us the roots changes give us the branches and it lets us stretch and grow and achieve new heights a wonderful quote that i had derived for this one probably these are the roots and these are the branches which are continuing to grow to be continued dear students welcome to rats racing against time 
of students in pathology. General pathology as such is a little abstract. However, we shall try to make it as interesting and lifelike as possible. The topic for the day will be vascular changes in inflammation and the importance is given within the enclosure. I start with the case history. I hope you can guess what the history is going to be. A 26 year old athlete qualified for the pre-Olympic fast track race, fell down during his practice sprint. He developed an excruciating pain. Soon, there was a swelling around the ankle. Ice pack and assistance were given by the sports medical doctor on the field, but it was of no avail. He was carried on a stretcher and admitted in the hospital. What are the probable diagnoses? I'm using the word R. What are the probable diagnoses? And what should be the immediate investigation?